everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of your favorite Gundam podcast, Colony Drop. My name is Isaac. And my name is Brian, and this is a podcast where we talk about anything and everything related to the Mobile Suit Gundam franchise. From the anime, to the models, to the music, to the movies, to the food, to the clothes, you name it, we do it all. Right, Isaac? Absolutely right. We even talk about games. That's right. And last week... We talked about Gundam Evolution. We roasted it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> listeners. No offense if you love the game. It just wasn't for us. But it got us thinking. It got our juices flowing. And so tonight, Isaac, we're going to basically create what we would want to see in a Gundam game. Absolutely right. And I know this will roll some people's eyes, but Brian and I, we kind of came up through gaming at about the same time. Uh, clear, almost identical, I would say, overlapping uh, preferences for certain types of games, everything from Counter Strike to Battlefield, maybe a little bit of Halo, but yeah, that's kind of our our main ballpark that we go to when we game uh, games of that that type of ilk. So that's our approach going into what can only be described as Gundam Field. <laughs> that's right. Um, so before we get right into it, Isaac, a few housekeeping notes. So based on the comments from our Evolution episode. Everyone is screaming at us, Isaac, to play Gundam Battle Operation 2, particularly when it comes to Steam. Apparently it's coming to Steam <laughs> within the next few months or so. And they've actually okay. screamed at us to play it before, maybe a year or two ago, back when we did our first episode on video games. And we haven't done uh -huh. it. It's only on, I think, was it PS4 right now? I don't have PS4 or any PlayStation, no. really. No. But this is my commitment to you listeners, because uh, you're saying that it has most everything we want. Isaac and I will attempt to play it when it comes to steam i've already added it to my wish list isaac will probably go do the same and we eagerly await its arrival to at least try it out so um, i'm excited yeah yeah also isaac when i was looking up uh, battle operation 2 there was a comment from a, a guy on steam who said something like you know what this game isn't that great mobile suit gundam online was better and i was like oh i don't remember what that is we may have touched on it in our uh, video game episode was that like two years ago now but I looked it up, and uh, apparently it's a game that came out in 2012, which allowed 52 versus 52 player matches. It had unit costs, wow. avatar customization, and I was like, hey, that sounds pretty close to the mark. But unfortunately, Isaac, it is shutting down on March 30th of this year. Oh, actually, it shut down, I think, last <laughs> year. So I don't think it's running anymore. <laughs> Of course we missed it. Yeah, which made me laugh. Like I was like, oh, well, we <laughs> just completely missed that boat. <laughs> um, so, listeners, I know, especially if you're a fan of uh, Battle Operation 2, I'm just curious out there if anyone had played uh, Gundam Online, curious about what your thoughts were and how it compared. It's obviously a little bit older, so um, maybe didn't have all the flashy stuff as, as the newer games, but in, in concept, sounds good. Um, second housekeeping item, Isaac. Small apology to the listeners. I am very behind on applying to all of your comments I have read most of them. It's just that Isaac will attest that my kids have been sick constantly for the last four months. Five months, Isaac? I don't know. <laughs> every time Isaac, uh, every, every time we record, he, he asks me if they're better. And they, not only are they better, but they've gotten sick again. And so it's just like it's this, a pendulum. Yeah, it's just this vicious cycle <laughs> that just you know goes on and on. Just like, what is the uh, quote from Endless Waltz? It, it, history is just a endless waltz of yeah. <laughs> war and peace and rebellion. <laughs> Is your, your version like parenthood is just an endless waltz of sickness and health? <laughs> that's, that's right. It is. You get them better and then a week later they're sick again. You're just like, what what happened? What, you, what you're doing is you're leveling up their immune system. <laughs> that's really what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> their, their, their cells are playing a game of like an RPG. God, I hope so. I hope so. So I, I see your comments in the morning and I read them. And then by the time night rolls around, I'm too tired to answer them. So I will answer them uh, someday. So I'm, I'm getting there. I promise. And uh, item number three, just, just a small warning, listeners, we're going to do a show in a few weeks. It'll probably have a good chance of getting us canceled, but uh, we hope you enjoy it. We will still be here afterwards as long as you are. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. It should be a good time, I think. <laughs> I think it'll all be appreciated and fun. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Isaac, you want me to go first or you want to kick us off? Okay. So just a little background before we even start. So <laughs> Battlefield is a giant gaming franchise, first person shooter. Uh, the most current version is Battlefield 2042. And it's maybe one of the few games online where you can play in very large numbers with vehicles and, uh, you know, all types of special classes across a battlefield in different settings. It's always two teams. You fight the enemy team. Uh, you guys gun it out in uh, modern warfare or past warfare, etc. Uh, well, actually, some are even set in the future. 
So Brian and I pretty much took the approach of, well, what if we were going to Gundamize this or at least take some aspects of it and put it into what we feel like would be as close as you can get to a, like an authentic Gundam experience on a, a first person shooter type battlefield game. And yeah, that's really how we approached this since evolution was just so far from what we felt a Gundam game should be. And Battlefield seemed to be the closest sort of format that you could reskin and really almost upgrade into a Gundam game. When I think of like making a Gundam FPS, Battlefield is the one that immediately comes to mind that is the closest and most adaptable to getting to what I would envision as a is a Gundam game, right? That it's basically got Battlefield, but a lot more emphasis on the vehicles, where the vehicles, where one of the vehicles is a mobile suit. Uh huh. Right. That's kind of where I feel this going because that battlefield is called battlefield because it involves the entire battlefield from the the grunts to the ground vehicles to the air vehicles and the maps are just massive Isaac which is the thing that we both felt was really missing from evolution the the scale factor right absolutely and the repetition of evolution which just got so stale yeah I'm a pretty frequent battlefield 2042 player but. To my knowledge, Brian, you've kind of uh, taken a bit of a Battlefield break. Not that you're missing a lot in 2042. It's, <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I enjoy it, but at the same time, it's it's not the home run that we've we've had before. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's still pretty fun, though. But that said, I'm kind of curious if you would like to start us off, because it's it's been a while, I think, since you booted up Battlefield. Sure. And I'd be curious about, um, yeah, what, what your kind of vision is for uh, Brian's Gundam Field. All right, so I'm going to call mine, uh, if I gave it a specific title, Mobile Gundam Conflict, and then colon, the example I'll rattle out tonight is, you know, the One Year War. Of course. So it's going to be, you know, Battlefield-based, but it's not exactly Battlefield, right? So my overall goal with this game is to create a Battlefield with the scale that feels appropriate for both the mobile suit and the surroundings, meaning the mobile suit is large related to the surroundings, But I also want scenarios that are engaging and memorable. I want to move beyond Isaac, like capture and defend the point, or just move the payload. Uh I would like to get a little more Gundam-y with it. Because even Battlefield can get repetitive in that respect, you know, when you're trying to capture the point or just run the tickets down or whatever. So I think if we can do more things that are representative of Gundam, it would be more fun. And then I think part of the engaging aspect of the scenarios making that successful is something that evolution lacked in my opinion which is scarce resources when you're in the mobile suit i want it to feel like you're really sorting for a battle like you have limited ammo maybe you can get resupplied but you can't just grab a box every 10 feet like in evolution like in evolution you could grab like health you know every around every corner yeah the hologram haro <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know. I've never liked that in um, first-person shooters. It's always bothered me. And I guess that's, again, that's because of the bias I think I have from Counter-Strike. Um, I know you can do that in Battlefield to some extent. There are medic, you know, there are medic packs and stuff. But I really like that about Counter-Strike. I think it brings an end to the round quicker, and you have to be more careful. Yeah. <laughs> Evolution doesn't force that carefulness because... Yeah, your your lives in Overwatch and Evolution, they're all fungible. They all feel the same. There's no risk because I can try again in 20 seconds if I fail. <laughs> in Counter Strike, there's not like, you know, the the CT guy that's like the medic and then like he puts a gauze pad on like a <laughs> bullet wound or something. You know, yeah. it's just well, we're either gonna win this situation or we're gonna lose. <laughs> right. Yes, and it, you can make a bigger impact when you have a game like that. You know. When three of your guys go down, you if you're a good enough player, you can still take out the other team. And I feel like you can't really do that in Evolution. You can't really capture the point by yourself if the whole other team no, rushes in. It's it's just a stream, really. Yeah, because they're um. you know even if you do a lot of damage to them, one of them's going to grab a health pack or heal you know the other person and just kind of overwhelm you. So it takes away a lot of your effectiveness. Not that like Gundam is the real world. Or anything, but like that's not how the you know the real world works, right? Like you, <laughs> it's real to us. <laughs> We're like that internet meme of the guy in the bleachers. It's still real to me. Yeah. God damn it! <laughs> yeah. Love I that guy. See another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Tomino goes, take it easy, bud. <laughs> Isaac and I are big um, classic WWF slash WWE fans. In case you haven't noticed, all of our Jim Ross, and JR, and the King comments, but um. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's on my to-do list. 
to make a video using Jim Ross of of all the Gundam. Oh, that would be amazing. Gundam situations that are appropriate. Yeah, <laughs> I got it, man. <laughs> I actually just watched a, like a YouTube, you know, whatever they call them, short things a today. Compilation? Yeah, where uh, Undertaker was talking to Mike Tyson for some reason, and he was saying how how much he hates it when people <laughs> call wrestling fake. You know, because while it is like scripted, they are out there like really hurting themselves, uh, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, it's so athletic. Yeah, and he held up his hands, which I guess all of his, you know, he's broken like every finger in his career. So oh, anyway, good thing he's undead. <laughs> yeah, he just rises again. He feels no pain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, a tangent. <laughs> Except for that weird time where he was like the American badass, oh, yes. and like they completely th- like he didn't have one piece of black clothing on. He like just yeah he he, <laughs> he turned into like the biggest patriot in the world. <laughs> yeah, like his jeans and his like uh, cut off collared shirt or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like a a bandana. <laughs> this is now the wrestling podcast. <laughs> yes. well, that would be good too. We should do that game, right? Oh, are you kidding? We're doing the series and the game. That's well. That's been on Isaac's list uh, for a long time, actually. Listeners, it'll, spoilers. It'll great, there will yeah. be a Gundam wrestling uh, show in the future. So everybody thought I hated G Gundam, but it turns out I was just I was just putting it back in the oven to bake into its true <laughs> form, which is G wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Q Jim Ross sound effect. Yeah. <laughs> so again, I want the I want the scarce resources. I want li- you know limited ammo. I want limited mobile suits, vehicles. You know, limited time. Forcing player choice, but allowing flexibility. So that means I want limited mobile suits and vehicle spawns for your team for that round, meaning you can't just you know spawn 500 times in a Gundam. Maybe you get more than one mobile suit because that might be a little boring if you only get one. But if your whole team mm-hmm. only gets you know 50 suits for the round, interesting. You know you got to be more careful when you use them. You can't just be dumb with them. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. That, that I can see a lot of situations then where like your team's really roasting you <laughs> for like something stupid yeah. you did. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. You collapsed a bridge on yourself or something. You're like, what are you doing? Yeah. That was like our only. That was our last Galgu. You idiot. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, hundred percent, hundred percent. Some people might not enjoy that, but I think it makes the game more strategic because you have to be more careful yeah. with your resource with what you're doing. I also think, and this is just my opinion, but for this example, I'm going to pick a time period to avoid sort of nonsensical interactions and like balance issues. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so I'm just going to say this game would cover, you know, 0079 through 0083 or basically the, the one year war ah. pre grips conflict. Just because I don't, I think part of what like evolution's problem is, is like, how do you balance the Zaku and the gym fighting the Sazabi or the new or the unicorn? Like the the better units just have so many more options, and like you over here have a gun, right? <laughs> so if you play within your time period, it's a little easier. And and again, another I think another way to fix that balance, Isaac, is um, which something which I think Mobile Suit Gundam Online had, <clears throat> based on what I was okay. reading, is that maybe you're not given a limited number of suits per round. Um, but maybe you're given a, some sort of round currency, and the better units cost more currency, and the you know lesser units cost oh. less currency, so that you have to make okay. Very CS. Exactly. It's, it's, it's if you've ever played Counter Strike, it's it's much more like the the money system. You know, buying your weapons, buying your armor. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing here. You know, do you want to go out in one Gundam or do you want to buy five gyms? Do you want one Gundam or two Jim Sniper twos? You know, do you want five Zaku twos or two Gelgoogs? Wait, so the the team is essentially voting on this at the start of a match? Like, okay, here's our budget. Everybody kind of put in your vote for what we should actually have <laughs> yeah, on I think, the field. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a question there. You'd have to figure that out. Whether it's, it's Gundam, 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 person, Gundam, 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 Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's person independent or team. Oh. It would be really hard, I think, to make it team dependent. So you'd probably have to do it person independent somehow. Okay. I, I do think they should just acknowledge... That Gundams are not equivalent to gyms and, and vice versa, and there should be an adjustment for that. And I think the easiest way to do it would be some sort of uh, round currency. You can call it, you know, Anaheim credits or, or you know, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, I don't, do we know what kind of money they use in the Universal Century? Is that a dumb question? Should I know that? I don't think it's a dumb question. I don't think you should know. I don't think it's really... I, I vaguely remember them handing money to each other, but they've never really mentioned what it was. They always do it in, like, gold know. bars, though, don't they? Well, I think that's only been, like... <laughs> Well, yeah, not always. Clearly, semi criminal situations with, like, you know, Neo Zeon being bought off. Right, right, right. Yeah. Outside of that, you know, it's always like they put, like, I don't know, coins or some type of bills on the table at a bar or something, you know. But I I guess that kind of makes sense. You know, how often do you hear, like, 
the word dollar. You don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't remember them ever saying it. Yeah. So maybe just call it gold. I don't know. But the point is there there would be some sort of currency that you could purchase maybe is the wrong word, but it forces you to be more strategic. So (laughs) it'll cost you 20 haros. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) If there's a better way to balance it, I would be open to that as well. So I'm not saying it has to have that. I'm just saying that not every suit should be equivalent. Because they're not in the real world, right? I think if you want the best fighter plane, well, we only have like 10 of those. Yeah. But if you want the ones from 20 years ago, well, we got like 50 of those. So Right. Yeah. So for, if I'm understanding you correctly, like the match begins. Mm-hmm. And like everybody on the Xeon side is a Zaku. And everybody on the Federation side is a gym. And only like, you know, in the next four or five matches, when you start seeing more custom mobile suits or Gundams or what have you, then you kind of realize who's clearly better than other people. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Or or and you who's, could... <laughs> who's relegated to just a mook? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've been playing for two hours and that guy's still a Zaku. <laughs> Zaku's actually getting worse. He can only afford one arm and only a heat hawk. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, is that your little brother? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Like, all right, everybody try to help him or something. <laughs> right, and that's that's how Counter Strike works. If you've never played Counter Strike, you you earn more money the better you do, and if you continue to lose, then you earn more money as well. So you could do that, or you let's say your pool is a hundred, Isaac, for the whole game, and you can spend your hundred as you see fit. But do you spend $5 on a Gundam or $1 on a gym? So it's just different ways of using up whatever your allotment is. I have a quick question. You talked about scarcity and how important that was to you. And that applies to ammo as well for the, the mobile suits? Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, when you launch it, like if, if you launch out of your whatever it is, you have a certain amount of ammo and maybe you can pick up some okay. on the battlefield. I'm not saying that you can't resupply it all with ammo. I just think it shouldn't be an unlimited ammo game, right? In Evolution, you just reload however many times you want. I see. I can just fire the whole game and have no consequence. Yeah. I don't know. See, current Battlefield, like with the vehicles, the the vehicles themselves have unlimited ammo. There might be a recharge time, you know, depending yep. on what you use, but it it is unlimited. So interesting. I but then again, current battlefield, because of that, there there is no way to rearm your vehicle. Well, there, there's no need. Mm, yep. But if they're if they took away the infinite ammo and they just swapped in, I don't know, somehow to resupply yourself, uh, airdrop, or you go to some building, or some yeah. other vehicle supplies you, whatever. It would add a different dynamic to the game. I wouldn't say it'd be bad, necessarily. So, yeah. Okay, interesting. I can get behind that, yeah. The only reason I'm adding it for the, the mobile suits here is because probably most of the combat is going to happen in, in the mobile suits, right? Whereas in Battlefield, most of the combat is on foot. Right, yeah. Without question. On foot, you do have limited ammo in Battlefield, but you can resupply, right? There, you know, there's the people that can put down the ammo box, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you yeah. could still have that skill. Right. Which brings me to my next point, Isaac, is that Uh-oh. you need to be able to have loadouts and swappable equipment like Battlefield does instead of just having the suit only has this one gun and this one melee attack, right? If I'm the Zaku, I want to be able to decide whether I equip the bazooka or, you know, which machine gun am I taking? Am I taking a heat hawk? Like, am I taking a cracker grenade? Right, yeah. Am I taking the optional, like, cannon attachment on my back? Anti-personnel weapon that turns villagers into Swiss cheese. (laughs) God, that was a terrible scene. (laughs) That's my default weapon. (laughs) Isaac always has one of those ready to go. Yeah, At a moment's I think notice. I just ignored the objective. Where's he going? He's going to that village on the hill. <laughs> God, the little the little dots on the on the map are just disappearing yeah. over there. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. They're they're anti Zeon. <laughs> <laughs> His KD ratio is off the charts right now. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're familiar with the battlefield system, you can have you know maybe your unit can equip f- four or five different guns. There's a lot of guns in battlefield, right, Isaac? Probably too many. Oh yeah. But you, you should be able to have different loadouts or different system. Like if I'm going to be a Zaku and I'm going to drop from the air, maybe I would prefer to carry something else. If I'm going to be defending something, then I want to bring a heavier machine gun, et cetera, et cetera. I think being able to swap equipment and have loadouts is really important. Uh, also, I think there should be, to your point on our evolution episode, there should be tons of unlockable aesthetic customization items. So in Counter-Strike, for example, they have an entire economy it's purely aesthetic. It doesn't help you in the game whatsoever. <laughs> it's basically mostly gun skins, gun and knife skins. But you can expand that here. You could have, you could paint different parts of your unit. I don't know what your opinion on some of those paint jobs in Evolution, Isaac. A lot of them were very elaborate and probably like not themed in well with the what we would really see really? in the show. No. 
the, the only one I really remember is seeing like a, a royal blue cyan Sazavi, but oh yeah, that's the only one I noticed. If anybody else had painted colors, like it was it was beneath me to notice. And on that same note, I played Counter Strike multiple times recently, and I can't tell you ever recognizing someone's gun as being different than like. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I, uh, yeah, I, I haven't noticed other people's guns really. I'm, I'm busy too. I'm too busy being sh- killed or killing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of, I mean, if you haven't played Counter Strike, the more, number one complaint about Counter Strike is it's too difficult. So it's just it's a hard game. Well, uh, yeah, it's punishing. The shootouts are too quick. You're never going to notice someone's customized gun. Like <laughs> you know, you kind of see someone and you're both dead within like a few seconds or something. <laughs> one of you's dead within a few seconds. There are some elaborate guns. Yeah, um, once you learn them, you, you'll start noticing them. Like I have one that my my favorite, my probably my best skin I have is uh it's the Icarus Fell for the M4. So um, I, I came back and played after a few years, and someone was like, "Wow, you're you know, I'd never see that gun." And I was like, "Oh, really? Like I don't know. Back in the day, it was popular, but." Um, <laughs> That's like a like an old man taking yeah. out like a, a blunderbuss or something like a musket. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "What do you mean you don't know the Icarus fell? Like this is, this is a great skin. <laughs> That's a classic." Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. So anyway, you could ex- you could expand that. I, I would want to see like realistic paint jobs, Isaac. You know, we don't have to go overboard. I think they should be unlockable. You know, maybe the paint jobs are unlockable for skills. And then to your point, we should have the decals. You know, you want to be able to put stickers and stuff, um, different markings on your mobile suit wherever you want them. I think that would be very personable and people would really enjoy doing that and trying to trying to get those in the game. I think that would be a fun goal. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And all those aesthetic things make it not pay to win. I like those kind of unlockables, everyone. So the players are all on mobile suits. Well, so okay, so that's a great question. So at the base level, you play as a pilot who can get in and out of suits and or other vehicles. That's not to say that most of the combat won't happen in a mobile suit because this is a Gundam game. We do need to make sure that everyone is in a mobile suit most of the time. Yeah, why wouldn't you, right? Right. I mean- <laughs> but maybe if there's enough, if there's too many players, you know, we can give you other options, right? So um, things off the top of my head that I would in- include. So. You could have people play as the ball, Isaac. People can get in balls that are real cheap. You know, maybe if you've run out of your currency, Isaac, maybe you can come back in a ball, or maybe you can come back in some of the, some other vehicles, like a Type 61 tank, or a core fighter, or a core booster, or one of the saber fish. Wow. It just gives you more options. You know, you know, maybe Tommy, who's yeah. not doing good, and his Zaku finally lost his last dollar, and he can't buy another Zaku, but you can let him come back in a DOP. <laughs> he gets in Gundam debt. <laughs> Yeah, the Magella attack tank, right? Uh, <laughs> I do. I do think Isaac, there would be some missions where we're going to require a, a mobile armor. So I'll get. I'll get to an example of that in a second here. But Ooh. you know, your Big Row, your Valvaro, your Big Zom, your Zeong, your Grublo, and then for the really big maps, Isaac. So for for people who haven't played Battlefield, Battlefield is organized into like large, medium, and small maps, right? And the large maps. Last time I checked, you can play up to 128 players. I think on a large map. That's right. Yeah. My favorite. So for the large maps, Isaac, if it's out in space, I say we get some spaceships involved. You know, the Federation, you can, someone can be piloting a Magellan, a, a Salamis, a Peg, a, even a Pegasus. Wow. Zeon, there could be, you know, the Chavez, the, the Musais, Guazine, Zanzibar. Go crazy and get yourself a Delos. If you're on land, you know, Federation, they can have their, uh, their heavy forks and their big trays. Zeon would have their Dabades and their Gallops. I think that'd be really cool. Those are like vehicles in Battlefield where, you know, humans in Battlefield are, are mobile suits, right? They're bigger. So I think introduction of other things around the mobile suits would be really fun. It doesn't have to be the majority of the game, but, you know, I think those options should should be there. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree. That's something I put in my notes, too. I kind of was trying to, like, think as far as balancing that it might be perhaps better if... Say, for example, you opt to be like in a Type 63. Well, you're, you're kind of more in like a squad of Type 63s and you can kind of issue yeah. commands to your little AI, you know, AI squad members. And of course, you'll never be as mobile as a, a mobile suit, but you'll at least have strength in numbers controlling, you know, like five other Type 63s. So yeah, that's fair. There might, there might be some things you can do. And I mean, uh, to the Type 63's credit, like whoever's in a mobile suit is probably going to be focused on other mobile suits. So you might be able to get away with some, um, you know, s- important kills that you normally wouldn't have. Yeah, absolutely. And there could be objectives that are important or easier to take if you had a tank for some reason or maybe if you had to go in and, you know, do something on a computer, right? So, okay, so if we talk about scenarios now, so maps, let's take a look at a, a large map scenario, Isaac. 
Battle of Solomon is perfect. So I would split it into two uh-huh. phases, and you could play each phase independently. But if I was playing the full map, I would say there's two phases. So the phase one is Federation must defend the solar system until it can charge, and Zeon must try to, wow. to destroy the solar system. And I think that's fun because it gives Zeon a more active thing to do than just capture the point. Not only do you have to get to the point, but you have to destroy this thing by doing something other than just standing there. Like I, That's why I don't like capture the point, because you just stand there. I like it when, you, when you're doing something. Like, at least in Counter-Strike, you're planting the bomb when someone has to defuse it, so there's something, there's like an active uh-huh. cat and mouse happening there. So here, I think it would be fun if, if you had to try to destroy the solar system. Let's assume that it charges, yeah. and then they fire, so there's a little cinematic, it fires on Solomon, and now Solomon is vulnerable. So then phase two is the Federation must land on and then capture Solomon from the inside. And not only that, but they have to destroy the Big Zom. So someone on the Xeon team gets chosen to pilot the Big Zom, and they have to go out, and <laughs> maybe multiple people, I guess, because right there were multiple people in the Big Zom. That's true. Yeah, I mean, some vehicles in Battlefield, you can put multiple people in there, yeah. That's right, that's right. And so you to win, you have to destroy the Big Zom. And obviously it would be super powerful, but there'd only be one of them. And I think that's fun, because it's not on the battlefield the whole time. It's only when they reach a certain part deep in Solomon. That's when the Big Zom wow. comes out. And then Zeon's objective is the opposite, right? They must defend Solomon, don't let people in. Right, yeah. That would be my example of a large map with more engaging objectives. Nice. So I, you know, I have others for medium maps. I got one for raid on Jaburo. For a small map, I decided, you know, we could do the Cyclops team attacking both the shuttle for the uh, that the Gun of Malix was in, and then also attacking the Gun of Malix on the colony. Um, oh, I'll, I'll say the colony one because I think that's fun. So phase one, Zeon must destroy the shuttle holding the Alex. EFF must defend. If it launches, Zeon can try to shoot it out of the sky. Phase two is basically when they attack in the Comfer. Zeon must locate the Alex and destroy it inside Libot. Federation must repel and prevent colony collapse. Because giving them a, a, the preventing the colony collapse uh, objective is, I think, fun, Isaac. Because if Zeon decides to shoot a hole in the colony, well, Federation pilots should be able to fix it using the the, the bird lime stuff or the sti- you know the sticky stuff that we yeah. that we love from uh, watching Victory. So space bubble gum. Yeah, and then uh, you know that would be a good example, Isaac, where the Zeon pilots could get out. If they get to the Alex before someone on the Federation side can activate it, they can get out and apply the charges or whatever to it, you know, on foot. So, like, things like that would give you a reason to get out of your mobile suit. Wow. I kind of went along the same vein of, well, meat grinder battles are fun and all, but Gundam has such cool little set pieces. Why not use them? So, I also put the solar system down, but I said, well, while the Federation's protecting it while it aligns and fires... Xeon kind of has to make a decision between either seeing if they can take out enough mirrors, which is, Mm -hmm. that's a tall order, or seeing if they can just take out the control ship. So that kind of adds like a nuance to the battle where, uh, of course, the Federation is going to try to protect that control ship. Right. But um, if if Xeon kind of wants the easy route, it'll just start breaking mirrors. But uh, again, there's there's so many mirrors, it it rarely works out that they, uh, they, they destroy enough that it makes a difference. Yeah, but I think that's I think that's great player choice though because that gives you multiple yeah. ways to achieve the objective, which is less boring when you're playing the same map over and over, right? Because like for one of my problems with Evolution Overwatch is I I can't all the games to me, Isaac, they bleed together. Yeah. Like I might remember a moment from a particular game, but I wouldn't be able to tell you which game that was in. But if you play a competitive game of Counter-Strike, there are things that only happen in that round, I mean, maybe people, you know, they go the same routes all the time because it's Counter-Strike, it's, people play it a lot. But you can't control what's, what dumb things people do with the bomb or dumb places they put it or just weird things that people do. <clears throat> and I feel like having multiple things like that where they can just dest- can destroy the control ship or the mirrors is much more memorable when someone does it a weird way and they win. Yeah, definitely. I, I can also imagine it making situations where even the team doesn't agree what to do. You know, some people right. are just going to go straight for the control ship, and other people are going to say, "I'm, you guys are nuts. They're going to be expecting us there. I'm going after the mirrors. You know, no yeah. one's going to be t- protecting, you know, thousands of mirrors. Right. Hitting the rewind a little bit. My my version was called Gundam Field uh, Universe Wars because, you know, there's so many different universes, yep. and then there's wars, and it, <laughs> it, it writes itself. This sounds like a, <laughs> like a Marvel movie, Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> It kind of is, although for me, each each battlefield is universe-specific, and okay. by that I mean 
if if we're at Odessa, you're not going to see, you know, the Victory Gundam flying around. You're not going to see a bunch of gins. It's just going to be what you would expect that was actually at Odessa. So a Got lot it. of that line of thinking as far as, um you know, interesting set pieces. And uh, like you were saying, something besides just meat grinder, head-to-head battle. Um, we could have uh, crossbone vanguard troops protecting a generator until it can power up all the bugs. And, yep. you know, of course, League league Military and or not League Military. Uh, God, they didn't even have a name in F91. <laughs> Whatever the, the remnant, the colony resistance, um, <laughs> along with whoever's left of the Federation there. Sea book and this ship. <laughs> yeah, the the the, the, space the, arc. the kids and the old people. Yeah, the, the space, the space arc, the arkers, whatever. <laughs> Another interesting one that might fill some some players with kind of a mixed feelings would be um, Earth Alliance protecting a Cyclops system until Ooh. it fully charges. <laughs> that, yeah, that has interesting implications, right? Because it's like, well, you're not going to get away in time <laughs> if it does charge. <laughs> yeah, you're only fighting for the defeat of the enemy, not to save yourself at that yeah. stage. Yeah, but um, backtracking a little bit more too. I thought it'd be... I think we agree, though, that, like, infantry should be an option, right? Like, maybe you can hop out of your mobile suit and go to, like, a, a Type 63 or something if you wanted, right? I think it should be an option for a few reasons. One, it's because it would okay. enable you to, if, for example, your mobile suit is damaged, maybe you can get out and still survive and get into something else. Or it could allow you to upgrade, right? Maybe you get to, a like, a hangar or some cache of just... A better suit, mm-hmm. right? Like if you're Zeon and um, you end up on um, what was what's the asteroid called, Pazoon, and just there's some cool suits in there, and you want to ditch your Zaku or your Dom, and you get into, you know, the Act Zaku or the uh, the what is it, the the Pazoon Dow Dowdage or Dowage or whatever. I think that would be cool just to be able to get into different suits. You could steal the other side suits. Nice. That would be hilarious, right? You could be a, tra- <laughs> a traitor on the inside. I think you should be able to get out for completing certain objectives, right? That happens in the show, right? Amuro and Char get out of their suits yeah. all the time. You know, Gato got out to make sure that the colony fell. So I, I think there's lots of reasons for you to be able to have some infantry level play. I don't think we're asking for a full on battlefield game for the infantry side, but the ability to get out and do limited amount of things I think would make gameplay fun. Yeah, I I somewhat agree. Like I feel like it, you should be able to of course use like a rifle and stuff on foot if you want. It's it's just so skewed against you to the point right. where like a glancing shot from whatever uh, mobile suits are are shooting around you could kill you. So yeah. you're really hoping you can only fight against other infantry, which is going to be rare anyways. But to kind of balance things out, I thought it'd be cool if if you are in infantry mode, you can kind of carry around like your own version of like the Regina system. So Ooh. if you so wanted, or the inf- or the rocket system that like Kiki's Village used against like that one idiot Zaku <laughs> pilot that had an open cockpit. <laughs> so theoretically, as an infantry, you can get a one shot on like a mobile suit. It's just going to be very difficult. But something else I thought that'd be um, a kind of a, a nod to the repeated practice of mobile suits having no security system in their <laughs> cockpit would be, as infantry, you can do you can. Do exactly what you're thinking right now, Brian. You can get your little grappling hook, little <laughs> elevator thing, and go straight up to the uh, the cockpit and pop it open. And yep. just like in Halo, you just pull someone out of that cockpit and you take their spot. That's how Victory Gundam started. Yeah. It, it's such a long shot, though, because a, a Molsu can kill you at, at the moment just by stepping on you by accident. Like The pilot might not even know you're there. But imagine how cool that would be if you were the Xeon <laughs> pilot and you stole the Gundam, right? And then all of a sudden yeah. your Xeon side has the Gundam. How shameful it would be too, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, speaking of uh, kind of balancing, you know, between infantry and, and a mobile suit or um, even mobile suits themselves, did you envision the game having sort of the same classes like we see in Battlefield, like Assault, Recon, Support, Engineer? I kind of thought that maybe the mobile suits would be, themselves would be the classes. Okay. I, I guess I would have to specify what type of gym. But if you're just a normal combat gym, you'd be assault, right? But if you were um, heavier armed gym, you know, you could be considered. Um, wh- wh- who's the guy with the ammo box with the with the machine oh, guns? Support. Support. Okay. So then you'd be, you know, like if you play as gun can and gun tank, then you're support. Right. Yeah. Zommel. Recon is one, right? The snipers. If you know, if you want to play as the gym right. snipers, 
or the Zaku snipers or yeah, Galgook sniper. Yeah, or the Jim Night Seeker. You know, you could definitely be recon in that sense. I think that would affect your loadout. You know, that that kind of stuff. I view it as what mobile suit you're picking rather than a, a full on class. But okay, I think it gets you to the same point. I think. Yeah, I I, I kind of thought along the same lines where th- this general format's appropriate assault recon support engineer. I feel like mobile armor should be included. Yep. Maybe not completely. I'll I'll get to that a little bit later. But um, what I meant is like, what was the name of the mobile armor at the end of MSA Glue that was repairing like the Ogus? The Big Rang. Big Rang. Okay. Clearly, that's like the engineer mobile armor, right? Because it yep. was it wasn't very maneuverable. It it had a pretty powerful weapon, but like it, it really didn't use it. You know, it wasn't the Death Star in the battlefield, but it was really good at repairing. So yeah. I feel like if you're that a mobile armor, like you're just a godsend to anything mechanized on on your team, because you can just patch them up and you know reload them and and send them out. So yeah, the classes definitely work in Gundam Field. Yeah, I think you can maintain the classes if you if you want to. I, I think it, you can fit the existing mobile suits into those categories pr- fairly naturally. <clears throat> on the mobile armors, I agree they should be included. I think they should just be included in different ways. So something like the big rang or the big row. Those could be used more widely, but I think if you're talking about the Big Zom or the Zeong or the Brow Bro, right. I think those would be very rare and limited to the one person on the one map that relates to that mobile armor or something. Yeah. Because it, it makes sense that, okay, Zeon has a big row. They could just deploy it wherever because there's lots of big rows. Not lots, but, I mean, there's more than one. Right. There's more than a handful. But we know there's only one Big Zom. So if you're going to, you, you know, Big Zom shouldn't be showing up in, like, Odessa. Yeah, kind of going along that line, like I thought to myself, well, of course you're going to want to play as many mobile armors as you can, right? Like, why wouldn't we put as many cool mobile armors? And then I thought to myself, if someone gets the Absolus, the game's over. <laughs> <laughs> the Absolus would be another one that I would say would be limited. Right. I was like, okay, so you'd either have to put a time limit on it, in which case it's almost like a special ability, or um, it's something that really only appears if Zeon's losing on that particular field. Mm. And at that point, it's like the Hail Mary. And, yeah. and vice versa. You could do the same with like the big tray showing up for the Fetties. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm not sure having them pilot a capital ship would really work just because of the scale almost. On the one hand, the, the, the capital ships would almost have to be like buildings, I think, where they, they can almost never be destroyed in Battlefield, yeah, as much damage as they take, you know? Yeah, they, they would have to have a lot of HP. I think you should be able to yeah. destroy them, but I think it should be difficult. More more difficult than it is in the show. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that, that was my concern. I was like, well, to get around that, you pretty much treat them like fixed turrets, you know? Like, you can take your mobile suit and fly up to a Solomus or a Klopp or whatever, and you just get next to the turret and like you know press e to enter and then you press e and now you're in control of like one of the turrets but but not the ship itself you know the ship is probably stationary or Mm. or barely moves so yeah i I felt like that was a a better way to balance it because like like you said otherwise canonically you know azaku will be taking out every solemnist within a few (laughs) minutes (laughs) yeah (laughs) these definitely won't be the Remember the Salamises from Igloo Isaac that just like oh, went, God. you know, a million yeah. miles an hour? Um, th- these won't be those. Yeah. I th- you'd have to make them move slow. I think to compensate, you just give them a lot of HP, and then you, you make the turrets and missiles a lot better than they are in the show to, to where mm-hmm. mobile suits are very hesitant to just go up and try to destroy them because they'll probably get blown up themselves. What are your thoughts on, like, I mean, this goes without saying, but space combat should have appropriate zero-G physics, but... um. What are your thoughts on like colony combat? Because I thought it'd be absolutely awesome if, you know, there's situations where players can be sucked out into space if they're like infantry or uh, if if at a certain point the colony just gets so many holes and damage that it's it starts collapsing and, you know, losing gravity and power and it just becomes one of those little debris shoal zones. I assume if the Federation's doing horribly and protecting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be fun if you could switch between, like, if you start in the colony, right, and you're essentially on, you know, gravity-based combat, but then th- there's too many holes and you get sucked out and you have to do some zero-G for a while. You know, I think that's always been a limitation of Gundam games. Sometimes it's hard to have a fully fleshed-out game in both gravity-based and zero-G, right, because it's very different feeling. Um, it's also hard to do zero-G combat. There's some games that have, they do it better than others. 
the game that I like the most, I mean, I haven't played a lot of Gundam games to be, you know, um, full disclosure, but the one that I liked a lot was on um, GameCube that <clears throat> not a lot of people played. It was called Pilot's Locust. It was very difficult. But the the zero g combat there, I thought was was good. I thought it was intuitive. It wasn't translated, Isaac. So I I, I went through oh. the trouble of like you know buying the little like uh, whatever, wow. whatever it was the action replay disc that you know could allow you to play um other region games. And I couldn't read a damn thing in the game because it was all in Japanese. <laughs> so I didn't know what the it's hell commitment. I was doing. But it was it was really fun when I did you know figure out what to do. But they had zero g mm-hmm. and land combat in that. And look, this is this is a dream game, Isaac. It has no budget. So I would say in my dream game, we get both. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Right. I forgot what Battlefield it was. It might've been Battlefield four or three. One of the maps has a skyscraper and if it takes enough damage, it collapses. <laughs> oh, that was, but that was Battlefield four. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Killing whoever's on it or in it or, or even mm-hmm. probably under it. Yeah. So I figured, well, we should have environmental hazards in the same way. Like maybe you're fighting around a mass driver, an orbital elevator that yep. can, that can happen. They can collapse all over you. Or even you could have sort of no-go areas on a battlefield. Maybe you're in space near Earth, and if you get to this one side of the map, you can't stay there too long, otherwise you get caught by Earth's gravity, and you know you start turning red hot and falling, and you die. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, the, the interactable environment, 100%. We have to have that. The scenario that uh, pops to mind immediately is when the 8th team was fighting Norris in, in the Goof Custom. <laughs> you know, if you were to do a a city fight, you would definitely want all those buildings to be interactable, right? You you want them to change right, yeah. as you cause all that collateral damage. Protect the gun tanks until the timer runs out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of my scenarios, you know, and then and also shoot down the Kurgan or whatever, shoot down the Zanzibar. So oh. <laughs> kill the defenseless escaping, <laughs> kill the civilians. <laughs> God damn it! <clears throat> or not? I guess they weren't civilians, but. Kill the survivors. At the end of the match, you get the Ryer medal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you get an immediate promotion to the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Well, I don't know. At the same time, I was like, would that be a scenario where you envision only one person being assigned the, the gym sniper? Or can anybody kind of be the gym sniper if they want? Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to sort those things out, right? Maybe you have a limited amount of huh. sniper slots yeah. and... That's a fair question anyway, right? Hmm. Should, you should have to have probably a certain amount of this type of unit. I'm okay with that. I know that bothers a lot of people, but um, just to make the scenarios work, I would be okay with it. I, I might be okay with the opposite. I mean, there's more than one way to skin a cat. You know, like, I'm sure yeah, yeah. Ryer had like a notebook of ways to take down a, um, the Zanzibar going into orbit. <laughs> the, the gym sniper wasn't the only one. Yeah, you know? I don't mean you should have to snipe it down. I think you yeah. should be able to kill it, how, you know, destroy it however you want. But I also don't think that if it's five on five, say, and you shouldn't all be able to play a sniper and just wait. There should be, if you do that, there should be an easy way for the opponent to punish you. Maybe the snipers are a little slower or something. And so if you all play as a sniper, then you're going to get destroyed anyway because they're just going to run through you. Well, yeah. Or, I mean, the sniper has to carry around that huge battery pack. So I imagine it's slower. Right. Might only be able to even fire while stationary. Right. But, anyways, moving along. Sometimes War Thunder does fun things for holidays, like, you know, everybody in the air has to fight, like, a giant snail the size of Godzilla. (laughs) So I thought it'd be funny for, like, April Fool's if, you know, the teams put aside their differences or something, and just for those 24 hours, everyone has to fight, like, a giant Haro on the (laughs) battlefield or something. Oh, that's great, yeah. Yeah, all mobile suits and vehicles are just turned into giant Haros, and it's just a bunch of Haros, like, shooting at each other on the field and stuff. (laughs) That's great. You know, I've never actually played War Thunder, and I didn't even realize that it existed, and it had such a huge fan base. But I went to E3 one year, and there was just so much War Thunder stuff, and people loved it. And I I was just shocked because I didn't even know what it was. Have you played it? Do you enjoy it? Is is it yeah. is that another system that we would be drawing on for this? You know, besides alongside Battlefield. Yeah, pretty clearly. But I would I would describe it as uh, Battlefield, but mandatory vehicles. That's it, it okay. really. You, you know, there, there's not a single infantry, so it's just vehicle on vehicle. Whether you're in the air or nothing but tanks, you know, what whatever ships. Well, there's World Got of it, War okay. ships, but yeah, yeah. I'd be curious. I've never played that game. I would definitely want to. I try it someday oh go to try we'll do it kind of on that note isaac this is really random but this is an anecdote of like why i want this game to work so much is there was a game i don't know what it was called it was one of those games that you play in an arcade when you're young 
back back when oh. arcades were a thing. Now I'm really dating myself. I was talking about an arcade, but there was a game. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. It was like Battle Mech or something, you know, some generic title. And you sat in Battle a chair, Mech. and you had and you played it with these two like um, not joysticks, but they were like I guess they were joysticks that you you had one for your left hand, one for your right hand, and and that's how you you know you to move left you you moved both of them left, and to move forward you moved both of them forward. And, and there were triggers and like special um, like bomb buttons on the thing. They were so cool. Like I wish they could have that set up to be in the in the cockpit for uh, for Gundam, like the like the one game they have in Japan. So one day, yeah. Oh, we can dream. We can dream, right, man? When I hear about games like War Thunder, I think of that. You know, I, I think of <clears throat> when it's made for vehicles. It seems like you need to play it in a, in a vehicle chair. <laughs> I suppose, but like depending on what you're playing, like the the keyboard's so much more forgiving. Switching between you know a tank or like oh a, true yeah yeah you for know sure. a, a jet a, a helicopter <laughs> yeah no absolutely yeah. I'm big on believing that like you, you should be open to using all the different vehicles that we see in different settings. Um, so I'd I'd be perfectly okay with somebody using like a gal for example and mm, dropping yeah. bombs from high altitude. Yeah. So as powerful as that is, you're clearly limited by. You know, you, you dare not get low. They could right. probably already still shoot you or send like a, a gym flight type or a saber fish up after you. Or I mean, the Gundam can probably just kill you if it wanted to. I feel like if you do get maybe mobile suit fatigue, there's so many different ways you can keep fighting. Or if maybe, I don't know, you, you always like the gal. Or you always liked um, uh, that hideous spider mobile armor <laughs> from the Gundam C oh, Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can hop in it, you know, go spread terror, you know. Uh, it, it, anyth- anything's possible, and uh, and everything's on the table as far as the setting goes. You know, I finally realized what that spider mobile armor from Destiny reminded me of because my son was watching Toy Story the other day, and it reminds me oh of Sid's, uh, like, Erector set, like, baby head yeah. thing. That's what it is. Right. That's what it it's reminded creepy. me of. <laughs> it gives me the, you know, the, the willies. Yeah, it's it's gross. It's, <laughs> what's weird about it is Seed borrowed almost everything, right? Seed right. Destiny borrowed almost everything, right? Uh-huh. And then the the time and effort they put into something new is the mechanical spider yep. from like Wild Wild West. Yes. <laughs> like a, a, a mobile suit torso <laughs> on the top of it. <laughs> This is now two Kevin Smith references in a row mentioning the Wild oh, Wild no. West spider. <laughs> wild Wild West. <laughs> if you, again, listeners, if you haven't listened to the Kevin Smith Superman Live story, it, it's like 15 years old now, but go, go listen to it. Because the spider is the most vicious killer in the animal kingdom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're also dating ourselves, though, because like we're of the age where conceivably we saw wild west in theaters right oh yeah yeah <laughs> and people some people listening to a podcast probably weren't even born for the wild wild west that's all right they, they, they can skip that one i think oh it was such a bad movie i don't even like re- you know some bad mo- some movies are so bad you you kind of recommend them to people oh, to yeah. like watch and laugh yeah this is but not like, one of this those. is don't <laughs> don't even do it yeah this is not the room caliber no, no. But save it for like the Gundam Western that we had, Gundam Gunslingers or something. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there was one thing I was ta- thinking about, Isaac, and that was Battlefield is obviously a first person shooter. Right. Well, in like vehicles, you can switch to third person. <clears throat> right. Yeah, okay. What do you envision for this game if you're in the mobile suit? Are you envisioning first person view or third person? Do you have a choice? Both? I absolutely, I, I think you should be able to swap. Okay, but uh, again, see, all right. Let's say you do swap with a, with a Gundam or a mobile suit. You're kind of questioning, like, what do you mean first person? Are you in the cockpit as first person, or yes. are you like kind of evolutioning it, where you you're pretty much in a first person shooter, and like you're just on the right corner. You just see like your gun in your right hand. I think you're in the cockpit, and you you deal with the monitor situation, or you just give them all panoramic cockpits. Even though I know they I didn't see. have those for a while, but. Yeah, so you battle tech it, <laughs> like the battle, yeah. the, the the mech warrior games where you, you absolutely see your cockpit unless you're in the third person view. Okay. Yeah, I, for my problem, Isaac, is that first person I think is much easier for and better shooting, but I think melee combat is difficult from a first person view. Probably yeah. lends itself more to a third part, the third person view. So I also arrived at the conclusion that you should be able to switch. So I'd be curious what other people would think on that one. You should be able to switch, but I don't know. I feel like switching will definitely make it harder. For, switching to third person will definitely make it harder for infantry to be able to like shimmy up the rope to get to your cockpit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as rare as that will be. 
Yeah, that's fair. But still possible. I don't know. I'm open to both. It, it, it would have to be done well for both. But um, did you have any thoughts on like balancing issues between mobile suits? As far as, you know, the, the, the pitfalls of Gundam evolution where the, the lone Zaku going up against <laughs> new Gundam, we, we knew that was only going to end one way. Yeah. So uh, my thoughts on the subject are it doesn't matter. And by that, I know that it'll get some shocked and gasped, but l- let me explain myself. Unlike Gundam Evolution, this game is much more balanced. And just like in the original series where there were a few times where like a Zaku 1 was giving Amuro trouble. Yeah. So much the same way in the right hands, a Zaku, especially customized with the right weapons and, you know, add-ons and decals or whatever, would outperform someone in the uh, the original Gundam, depending on, you know, experience and all that. I'm okay in this game with the Gundam being just flat out better than a Zaku or a Dom uh, mm-hmm. or a Goof. I, you know, I'm okay that the Gundam can take out five Zakus. That's why I'm I'm introducing the concept of the round currency, whether it's gold or whatever, because you're spending more to get that Gundam than you are the Zakus. And so if you're good enough in the Zakus, you will eventually defeat the Gundam and probably be better off for it because you didn't spend a bazillion dollars on your Zaku. So that's my way of balancing it, yeah. is to just say that they're not balanced. That's the point of the units being different. I don't think you should hold them all being equal. Like, I want the Gym Sniper to be a better sniper than the Gundam. I want the Gym Sniper 2 to be a better unit than the original Gym, right? I'm okay with the Gelgoog being really good. The way I'm getting around it is by the round currency. Would you be open to the currency being Gundarium? <laughs> <laughs> to Gundanium alloy. <laughs> Federation Francs. Corruption bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what do they use in? Uh, well, it's based in Jaburo, so South America, Chile, it's like Brazil-ish, right? I don't know. Oh, I thought they were based on the other coast. The Brazilian flag is. Yeah, right. Yeah, maybe we're using the Federation Real. I don't know. I, I like alliteration better though, Isaac. It should be an F. The Federation what? Frank. Like that was French? what I thought too. Yeah, they're called Fetties. <laughs> yeah, because. I would just be okay with them not being balanced because I think it's too difficult. If you have, you'd have so many units, there's no way that you you can get them all, yeah, you know, equal. And I don't think they should be equal. Yeah, I would say by their very nature of being different, they're somewhat balanced in their own way. Like the the fire output going from a Zaku is way higher than a Gundam. The yeah. the Gundam has nothing like the anti personnel weapons. You right. know, which which could maybe save the Zaku's ass, depending on how close infantry got or something. Yeah. The Gundam absolutely does not have the mobility of a Dom, even though the Dom can probably be much easier, e- easily killed than the Gundam. So it's, uh, they're all different in their own ways. Just just have fun playing with them. And as usual in Battlefield, sometimes luck is always a factor. You know, you could be fighting someone that's uh, multiple ranks above you and you still kill them maybe with a lucky shot or they were distracted by something else and who knows. So Yeah, or you just destroy the house that they're sniping in, right? Yeah, <laughs> we'll level. yeah you get into the, the, the Solomus's cannon and you just blow away that building. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isaac. Well, do you have anything else on your list? No, that's about it. I just feel like Gundam is ripe for a game of this setting, even though the fan base is clearly majority (laughs) in Japan. (laughs) I feel like if you make a great game, it'll eventually trickle over into America. And, you know, you got the foundation here, the grassroots for for Gundam fans. And then from there, it could definitely spread if it had really good mechanics and stuff like that. And was even launched with like a series, you know, like, I don't know, Witch from Mercury or something. You could have that prequel Battlefield, Brian, where like the soundtrack score, if you adjust those settings and increase it, in the background, you can hear someone singing "Happy Birthday." <laughs> <laughs> so heart wrenching that prologue was. Not for me. <laughs> I'm about to blow out your candles. <laughs> God, it still upsets me that that whole operation really could have been solved by like just sending an explosive packed vehicle, <laughs> a missile. Yeah, a guy. The admiral, missile, the yeah. admiral Isaac method, where like we don't even need this little you know tiptoeing around with eggshells. Just blow that <laughs> thing out of the way. <laughs> Shoot it from afar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing standing in the way of this game, Isaac, is, uh, like you said, the fan base is you know, not that big over here, and money. The game we just described would cost exorbitant amounts of, of dollars, millions and millions of um, Federation francs. De- developing a battlefield from the ground up, essentially. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only one of the most really. complicated <laughs> engines already. 
<laughs> yeah, you got to aim high, right? You know. Why not? Yeah, we're, blank check policy here at Sunset. So we we were told to dream big, and that's exactly what we did, Brian. Yeah. What, what did they teach us in grade school, Isaac? Reach for the stars. I think that's what we're doing yeah. here. Yeah. And and if you miss, you'll grab a colony. <laughs> <laughs> Then you can just and then you you know, can, slam it down you on can Earth. Drop it. <laughs> yeah, just drop that sucker. <laughs> Move on to the next dream. <laughs> oh, jeez. On that note, Isaac, listeners, we want to know what what your thoughts are on our dream game. You know, like what is your dream Gundam game? I'm assuming it's not Gundam Evolution, based on the review percentage on Steam, which I think is like hovering around fifty percent. Isaac. Oh God. Do you want this battlefield style type game? Yes. <laughs> Do you feel like they just missed the mark with evolution and, and that that is really the direction they should head? Are you maybe one of those people that really love the old uh, like battle assault games where it's like a fighting game? Just really curious what the what the fandom out there thinks. And especially if you've played uh, Gundam Online, I want to hear someone's opinion on that game. And then like I said, I know Battle Operation 2 sounds like it has a lot of the stuff we're, we're asking for, so Isaac and I will give it a shot, I promise. Yeah, but again, we we went into this episode blind. We've never played that game. I might have seen like a few seconds of footage of it. Footage like it's some exotic <laughs> elephant, like that that's only been glimpsed once. It's a historical um, <laughs> event. <laughs> yeah, I saw a little bit of it on YouTube, maybe, and I might have confused it for evolution, and then like played evolution and was like, why can't I, you know, go up at the colony shaft or something? <laughs> and that this clearly explains why. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Uh, tell us what you think, your thoughts, what you'd make, and keep on wishing for more Gundam gaming content. All right, everybody, don't forget, before you go to sleep tonight and plug in your Battlefield 2042, stand next to your bed, salute that frame picture of Amuro Ray, the greatest of all time, and recite the Federation Pledge. Into the night, Captain Bright, Londo Bell, Zeon Fell, Liberty and Justice, Amuro Trust Us, you said your farewell, now we'll give him hell. Good night, everybody.